Hello, hello, hello. Welcome to So Booking Cool, specifically the So Booking Cool Report. I'm Joel B. And this is something that I've been wanting to do for a while. I just never got around to actually doing it. But I decided to give it a try. One of my resolutions and just goals in general, and starting with 2020, is to just to just go for it. You know, I'm always looking for ways to to grow and expand and i think part of how you do that is by exploration and experimentation so that's the kind of energy that i that i like you know that i like to be on happy black history month i want to start things off by well there are so many black figures to recognize when it comes to the world of literature langston hughes is one of them the legendary American poet, social activist, novelist, and playwright. His birthday was actually February the 1st. His works have been published by, many of his works have been published by Knopf, Simon and & Schuster, and Henry and & Halt, just to name a few. And it goes to show you that a lot of these publishers have been around for a very long time. You know, so the, isn't that interesting? A very long time. Speaking of a very long time and publishing and Knopf, I'd like to pay respects to a publishing legend. His name is Mr. Sonny Mehta, the late Sonny Mehta. He passed away this past December, exactly at the end of December. From what I understand, he had increasing complications with pneumonia. Um, Mr. Sonny Mehta started his publishing career during the 60s and he was known for working with commercial as well as literary fiction. He also loved beautiful book covers and took pride in the book covers. Many of his authors under his leadership have won awards, including Alice Munro and Toni Morrison, just to name a few. R.I.P. Toni Morrison. So, you know, much respect to Mr. Sonny Mehta. During my stint at Penguin Random House, I did see him a few occasions in passing. And I just remember even just seeing him in, pa in passing and not really having much of an exchange with him, I still could just feel like, you know, this is, you know, he's, he's nice. You know, you just feel like you're getting a positive vibe from someone. And I also just remember thinking that, you know, wow, you know, he's up in age. He's a man of a certain age and he's still very committed to his work and to his craft. So all of that to say, rest in peace, Mr. Sonny Mehta. Publishers Weekly actually named him Person of the Year back in 2015. Okay, also definitely have to pay respects to the late Kobe Bryant, as well as his daughter, Gianna Bryant, and the other seven passengers who died in that horrific helicopter crash. Whew, God bless them. I know for the world to be shaken by Kobe Bryant's death, I can only imagine, you know, what his family is going through and those who knew him well. You know, you, you can just only imagine because to be, whether, you know, you were a fan or a, a, a sports fan, a Lakers fan or a, a casual fan of Kobe or just somebody who, um, you know, just was a, you know, you knew who he was because a lot of us knew who he was. Uh, and what I realized is that regardless of if somebody was an aspiring athlete or in the sports world or not, Kobe impacted a lot of people across industries. Um, I've come across plenty of people who have said watching Kobe Bryant's interviews lifted them up and inspired them to keep going. So in moments of, you know, doubt and apprehension and just losing inspiration, they would watch a Kobe Bryant interview and become re-energized. And that, that says a lot. That says a lot. Kobe Bryant was also an author as well as a publisher. Granity Studios is a media company of books, television, film, and podcast. And he founded the, the company. You might know from keeping up with So Booking Cool on social media that Granity Studios had reached out to me a couple of months when 
their title, their new title at the time, Legacy and the Queen, which is a YA fantasy novel um, that focuses on tennis, they reached out and, you know, asked if we would review the book. And of course, I was, you know, excited and, and honored at the time, and I'm even more so now. So I would also like to read the official statement from Granity Studios. When you visit their website, they have this message on the, on the site. The Granity Studios family, along with our partners, Mamba Sports Academy and Bryant Stable, is devastated by the passing of Kobe Bryant, his daughter Gianna, and the seven other people lost on Sunday. We send our love and thoughts to the Bryant family and to the friends and families of Alyssa, John, and Carrie Altobelli, Peyton and Sarah Chester, Christina Mauser, and Ara Zobayan. Granity is a word Kobe created that is a combination of greater than infinity. How very Kobe. In everything he built, Kobe was driven to teach the next generation how to reach their full potential. He believed in the beauty of the process, in the strength that comes from inner magic, and in achieving the impossible. We honor and will continue Kobe's mission and commitment to using creative education to inspire people to be the best versions of themselves. The Mamba Sports Foundation has set up the Mamba on Three Fund to support the other families affected by this tragedy. To help those families, please visit mambaon3.org. For those who are inspired to continue Kobe and Gianna's legacy in youth sports, please visit mambasportsfoundation.org. And there you have it. That is the official statement from Granity Studios, which was founded by Kobe Bryant. Rest in peace and God bless his loved ones and all the victims and those who are no longer with us involved from that crash. Okay, so also speaking of Black History Month, Barnes & Noble and Penguin Random House caught some heat. Yes, they got some backlash, okay, because Barnes & Noble Fifth Avenue and Penguin Random House, they teamed up for an initiative called the Diverse Editions which is an initiative where book classics like Alice in Wonderland, Romeo and Juliet, Moby Dick, The Three Musketeers, The Secret Garden, The Wizard of Oz, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, to name a few, were republished with illustrations of black characters on the covers. Okay, so this was very controversial. Diverse editions said that the purpose of this initiative poses the question that what if your favorite literary characters reflected the diversity of America? So this was partly inspired by the casting of Noma Dumezawini, who is Black, and she betrayed Hermione Granger in the original stage production of Harry Potter and the Cursed Child, which initially was based only in London at the time. So a lot of people responded. From what I saw online, there were people who felt like this was offensive because they're saying even if the characters are portrayed as African-American on the cover, when you actually open up the book and start reading it, clearly you'll know that these characters were not meant to be Black. So this article, which was published on Publishers Weekly, the website, by writer Ed Nowatka, okay, shout out to Ed Nowatka, they give more information, including what some of the authors had to say themselves about this initiative. So Angie Thomas, the author of The Hate You Give and On the Come Up said, or here's a thought, promote books by authors of color. Just a thought. And I'm going to pull up another author, Porichista Kakpur said, good job, you managed to make diversity look racist, a real talent of white America. And author Eric Jerome Dickey said, how about just putting my novels and novels by other people of color up front and on display? We have amazing covers of black people who represent characters that actually appear in our labors of love. Can't browse what you can't see and can't buy what's not stocked. Thanks in advance. So naturally, Barnes & Noble had to issue a statement. And here's what they said. 
We acknowledge the voices who have expressed concerns about the diverse additions project at our Barnes & Noble Fifth Avenue store and have decided to suspend the initiative. Diverse Editions presented new covers of classic books through a series of limited edition jackets designed by artists hailing from different ethnicities and backgrounds. The covers are not a substitute for Black voices or writers of color whose work and voices deserve to be heard. The booksellers who championed this initiative did so, convinced it would help drive engagement with these classic titles. It was a project inspired by our work with schools and was created in part to raise awareness and discussion during Black History Month in which Barnes & Noble stores nationally will continue to highlight a wide selection of books to celebrate Black history and great literature from writers of color. End quote. That was the prepared statement from Barnes & Noble regarding the backlash over the initiative. So what are your thoughts on this? Do you think that this was very tone deaf? Was it offensive? I, for one, do think that there are books that are very much new and, you know, contemporary and modern and currently being released, written by Black authors about Black characters or predominantly Black characters. And those books do not, do not always seem like they get promoted as much as they should. I mean, there are people who, who work in the industry who say this. So I would like, speaking of black authors and writers and black characters, I want to give a shout out and congrats to Ben Philippe, who won the William C. Morris Award for his debut novel, The Field Guide to the North American Teenager. So the William C. Morris YA Debut Award was actually first given in 2009, and it honors a book published by a first-time author writing for teens and celebrating impressive new voices in young adult literature. So congrats to you, Ben. And by the way, you guys should check out, if you have not already, our interview. We did, it, we did do an interview, Ben and I, about the field guide to the North American teenager. I would also like to give a shout out and congrats to publishing veteran Andrea Davis Pinckney, who was inducted into the New York State Writers Hall of Fame. This was founded by the Empire State Center for the Book. So congratulations to Andrea, who continues to do great work with her editorial leadership and direction for trade editorial at Scholastic. And last but certainly not least, Cody Newman. She was just named Next Up Artist by KISS FM LA. So by the way, you can check out our interviews also with Andrea Davis Pinckney, as well as Cody Newman. Cody is continuing to rise. Shout out to Jeff Goko, who keeps me abreast of Cody's milestones in her journey. It was really a pleasure getting to talk to her. Um, from the moment I heard her, her debut album, her EP, End of Infinity, I was like, okay, this girl, she's, she has it. She's really talented. So she's been recognized by, you know, Radio Disney and, you know, she's just continuing to, to climb the rake. So yeah, shout out and congrats to them. So as for new reads and current reads, there are different books. There are always books that I am interested in reading and checking out, whether it's fiction or nonfiction. Um, I've also been thinking about rereading some of the books that I really have come to enjoy. But a book that I am interested is interested in is Such a Fun Read by Kylie Reed. And this is an upcoming title, but it's called I Try to Change So You Don't Have To. And that's by Lonnie Love, who is one of the hosts on the daytime talk show, The Real which is also one of my favorite shows. I always look forward to watching The Real. And I'm really looking forward to seeing what Lonnie has to say. This is actually Lonnie's second book. She wrote a book before, but that was more of a like a, an advice book for, for dating and love and relationships. And now I, from what I understand, this is more of a an autobiography from Lonnie. So I'm really interested in in learning more about her journey. Uh, I, I honestly could see all of the women on The Real, you know, who have uh, not yet written books to write books, because I know Tamira is an author as well, Tamira Maury Housley. But she has not written a memoir, an autobiography, which I myself would definitely love to check out that book. 
um, as well as Jeannie Mai and, and Adrian. Amanda Seals, who we know was newly added to the show, she has a book. It's called Small Doses, Potent Truths for Everyday Use. And I recently started reading it and I'm enjoying it already. I'm enjoying it already. However, I do, I did notice a pin mark in my book and it certainly did not come like that. Well, like when I received the book, it, it was not like a pin mark was not on it, but I did leave my book unattended for a moment in, in, a, in a public place and then I come back and then I see that. So as you can imagine, <laughs> I was upset. I was pretty darn upset, um, especially because I had been considering making that a book that I was only going to like read like in the comfort of my home and everything, you know, but you know how you're, you're, you're so excited to dive into that book that you, you don't really care where you are, you know? So, so for me, I was like, you know what? I think this raises an interesting question, an interesting topic, actually. When it comes to literature, where do you prefer to read your books? Do you, do you have books that you only want to read at home or books that you don't care? You'll read it in public. You'll read it at home. It doesn't matter to you as long as you can read it and have the time to read it. Maybe during your commute to work or coming back from work. Maybe when you're waiting in the, the office at the, for, you know, for your appointment, you know, what, what do you do? Do you have books that you're like, no, 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 I only read this at certain locations. So. <laughs> Let me know. Speaking of memoirs as well, Jessica Simpson, she just released her memoir. It's called Open Book. It's published by Day Street Books, which is an imprint of HarperCollins. And wait, speaking of HarperCollins, I know earlier we mentioned The Field Guide to the North American Teenager that was published by Al Alessandra Balzer, who also appeared on So Booking Cool. And that was a great interview with her as well. So you should check that out. And, um, but yeah, going back to Open Book, um, which is also HarperCollins' title, this is a book that has been making a lot of buzz. And I, I get why. You know, Jessica Simpson is one of those celebrities that many of us are familiar with, and we, we know who she is, and we remember her. We remember the newlyweds reality show on MTV. You know, we remember her as a singer and, you know, her voice. And, you know, we there's, there's a lot that, that went on there. And um, it seemed like every day, you know, there were very interesting excerpts from her book. So great publicity, you guys, Day Street Books. Shout out to Carrie Thorne, by the way, who is the editorial director of Day Street Books. And you can also check out our interview with Carrie as well if you visit SoBookingCool.com. But uh, Open Book is a book that I'm also interested in reading because you know i i want to know what jessica simpson has has been through especially during moments where it's like i couldn't imagine that stuff was going on i know a, one of the tidbits that i learned is that jessica simpson not unlike many of her peers in the industry she suffered an eating disorder and she was told she had to be a certain size in order to be a pop star and what she would actually do was um, she would use eyeshadow to help give the appearance of abs. And this was around the irresistible era. Yeah, so I, I'm just really surprised about that. I mean, I just, just I, I wouldn't have any idea. And generally speaking, that's what I really like about reading memoirs and autobiographies and stuff, because you just, you, you find out stuff that you would not have known unless the person revealed it. You know, to me, these kind of books are kind of like, they're confessions in a way. They're confessions. So what gets you interested when it comes to reading a celebrity memoir? I know it's not a genre for everyone. We all have our different tastes in books and stuff, but what gets you interested? Is it because you're a fan of that person already? You're like, you're already a fan of that celebrity, or maybe you want to like work in their field of work someday. Maybe you do work in that industry. Is it because you're looking for like a salacious or a scandalous juicy read? You know, what are the reasons? What piques your interest when it comes to that? So this has been the So Booking Cool report. And 
you know, we'll we'll see how this goes. Thank you so much for listening and checking this out. Make sure that you visit SoBookingCool.com and also look us up on YouTube and SoundCloud. Check out new and old interviews. Some of our new interviews include Justin Hurt Dunkley, who is going to be on the upcoming HBO series, Mayor of Easttown, as well as Malcolm X Bowser, who is the author of Urban Excellence, and Nadie Taylor, who is the author of Given. So it was great speaking with all of these, you know, really talented people who are just doing their thing. And um, so check them out and also check out some of the old interviews, as I said. I know the Molly Glick one continues to get a lot of love. Shout out to Molly Glick. She is a literary agent at CAA. You guys check that out. Thank you again, and make sure you stay tuned for upcoming interviews and reports. But until next time, so booking cool and stay, stay cool, stay you.